Hello, my name is Gus, and I'm here today to show you how to build a fire. Now, before we start anything, there's two things that we need to make sure we have. Well, three things, really. First of all, we need to have water, whether that's a bucket or a watering can. The purpose for this is once we have the fire going, we need to be able to put it out once it's done. The other thing we need is some sort of ignition. Now, this could come in the form of, a match, of matches, a lighter, or any other sort of fire starter that you may have. And the last third thing that we need is sticks. And if you look on either side of me, we have two small fires already built. Now before we get into these two types of fires, we're gonna talk about the reason that we need fire in a survival situation. So the main reason, or the biggest reason, is warmth. To keep yourself warm on a cold night. Another good reason is for food, to cook any food that you may have or that you may capture or hunt. So now, we're gonna get into the two different types of fires. The first one on my right is a teepee fire. As you can see, it's tall, the sticks are all leaning inwards towards each other, and a good use for this fire, for example, is if it's raining and the logs and sticks are wet. Because, in this case, starting the fire from the inside, and all, the way all of the, the, the sticks lean in on each other, it allows it to light better, even though the sticks will be wet. The other one that we have, we call a log cabin fire, which is named because of the way that the sticks are stacked on top of each other. And a good use for this fire is for cooking. And as you can see, we have a small teepee on the inside. And the reason for this is that it makes it easier to light the log cabin, but once it's lit, this is a less efficient fire, so it'll burn hotter and it'll burn longer, which makes it really good for uh, long duration cooking. And also the logs should, should maintain their stability for longer, which allows a place to put a pot or any other sort of uh, cooking apparatus. So now we're gonna go into the basics of building a fire. So the first thing that you need is some kindling. So if you look on the ground anywhere, right in front of me, I've already got quite a few little sticks. Sticks are great kindling. But as a fire starter, you want something that's uh, drier, flatter, leaves do really well. However, we don't want to use many leaves in our fire because they call it, create a lot of smoke. And smoke isn't always that pleasant to be around. However, if you do have some sticks, these ones aren't perfect at it, but some sticks you can usually rip apart, you probably can't see this, to get really thin pieces. These will be great fire starters. And so the idea is, if you take any sort of fire starter, you want to put it in the ground, on the ground. And of course, you want to make sure that you're not on, in an area with any trees. As you can see, there's no trees around me. There's not much greenery on the ground here. I do have a fire pit behind me, which is where I would usually start a fire. However, we're not actually starting any fires for the purpose of this video. So I'm going to show you on the ground in front of me. You need to have your fire starter. And then you, as that starts going, you want to take these smaller sticks and you want to add them to that fire. So imagine these leaves are on, have a small fire. You want to add your sticks to the fire to then get those lit. And then as you add those sticks, you want to increase in size. And so for either of these examples, you would already have all of this built out. So inside of the teepee, we don't have it in there currently. This is just an example. But you would have the sticks and the fire starters inside of this teepee fire and this would most likely be, be a lot bigger this is just a small example again so as you can see we have larger logs over here you would likely want to use those logs to build a larger teepee fire so that it lasts longer for you now in the case of a log cabin fire you would build a much smaller teepee fire and then once you get that going you'd want to build the log cabin around it or if you feel more comfortable you can build the entire fire, including the logs, and build the log cabin around the little teepee. Have something that you're lighting and stick it underneath in order to light inside so that it builds the fire. So once you have your fires built and they're roaring fires, everything's going really well, and they start to die down, maybe you're ready to call it for the night and go to bed, or you have another activity coming up that you need to do, and so you want to put out your fires. The easiest way to put out fire is to have a bucket of water nearby. And when you use a bucket of water, you want to slowly go over the fire 
making sure you get all the embers. Now what is an ember, you may ask? If you look at the fire and you see anything glowing red, that can still start another fire. That is still hot. And anything on that can start a fire. So you wanna make sure you get the water on those glowing embers. If you don't have water, say you're out in the woods and you don't have a reliable source of water, things that will also work are sand or dirt. And in that case, you simply wanna put the sand or dirt on those same glowing embers. So as you see, there's some sand around me. It's pretty hard, so I can't really show you. But digging any of this up and putting it on the fire would help you put that fire out. It is very important to make sure, I cannot stress this enough, all the embers in a fire are covered or are out before you walk away from a fire. It is very easy to start an uncontrollable fire because you're not careful. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something here, and I hope you all are staying safe and healthy. Goodbye.